Let me make a fuck around on this Sunday morning. Let me hear you hop your heart in there. Just who, just who I am. Tell 
little church. So I need y'all to come on with me. How many know the Lord does this for you?
Also in the bell, pour some love, will you? Maybe you saw it on my Facebook page. Maybe you heard me talk about it 
on yesterday in our leadership meeting, but our church was able to be a blessing to the Rigdon Road Elementary School this past week, and we were able, we were able, amen, to give them, uh, give them some uh, copy paper, we were able to give them some water, some paper towels, we were able to be a blessing to them on this past week, and we are grateful to God that the Lord has blessed our church to be a blessing. I said the Lord has blessed our church to be a blessing, and, that's, and, 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 and I don't mean to belabor this, and I, I really need to get into preaching because time is getting away from me, but I, I, want, I want to emphasize that that's why we want to pay off this mortgage so that we can be a blessing. Amen. We, we, we get about $350 on this project, but what if we didn't have that $5,000 a month mortgage payment? How much more could we have done to be a blessing to, to our community and to the people that God has called us to touch? We want you to continue to invest in the kingdom of God through your tithes and your offerings. Six ways to give. You can go on the website, Greta Beulah, dot church for slash giving you can go to givelify search greater beulah baptist church uh, you can also uh, go to the cash app our handle is dollar sign uh, greater beulah you can even come by the church so melody in 613 6th avenue columbus georgia 31901 thank you uh, god bless you thank you so much uh, you can mail that in you can call our deacons and set up where you can give by appointment. Or if you're going to be here in the parking lot with us, you can bring that gift with you when you come to worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. All right, let's get into this word, Acts chapter number three. Acts chapter three. Have you been blessed by this study of the word in Acts chapter three? appreciation he asked me to preach his anniversary message now I want us to send him an anniversary greeting so if you would help me raise up those horns to let Pastor Trey know that we want him to have a happy Pastor's appreciation thank you thank you so much Acts chapter 3 I'm now at verse I've been reading all 10 verses today. I only want to read verse 8. The scripture says this from the New American Standard Version of the text. And with a leap, he stood upright and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. With a leap, he stood upright began to walk and he entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God. I want to bring to a conclusion today our study of the message entitled, Let Me Try My Legs. Let me try my legs. This will be part four. Now, as we studied this passage, we iterated and re- iterated to you that Acts is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus and that that ministry is being carried out and carried on through the people of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. We've used Acts chapter 1 verse number 1 to help us establish that the two priorities of Jesus' ministry is the ministry of doing and teaching. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus
Jesus began to do and to teach. And I've taught you over this past month that the demonstration of God's power is the doing ministry and the proclamation of his message is his teaching ministry. Again, the doing ministry is the demonstration of his power. And the teaching ministry is the proclamation of his message. And so we've learned that God, according to John chapter 3, verse number 34, thank you so much, gave to Jesus the Holy Ghost without measure. And we've learned that he will give him to us if we ask him for that Holy Ghost. And it is through the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus carries out his ministry. And we're aware, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Ghost. And he was anointed with power. And that's how he went about doing good. And the Bible says, what kind of good was Jesus doing? He was healing all oppressed by the devil for God was with him and we know that Jesus' first sermon Luke chapter 4 verse 18 declares that the spirit of the Lord is upon me this is Jesus talking because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Jesus has been sent to set free those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I just wanted to run through all of that to remind us that we've been focusing on what Jesus did through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we've even made mention of what Jesus said. We've made mention of what Jesus taught. We are talking about the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're talking about Matthew chapter 6, and when you pray, enter into your secret closet. We're talking about Matthew chapter 6. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. We're talking about Matthew chapter 7 where he says judge not for the same measure in which you were judging you will be we're talking about Matthew chapter 7 where he says do unto others as you would have them do unto you we're talking about Matthew chapter 7 where he says he that hears these sayings of mine and do them he'll be like a man who built his house upon the rock and when the storms came and the winds blew and the waves beat up against that house. That house stood because it was founded on rock. But he says, those who hear these sayings of mine and does not do them, he'll be like the one who built his house upon the sand. And the same storm came and the same winds blew and the same waves beat up against his house. But great was the fall of it because it was not built upon a rock. That is what Jesus taught. But I have not told you, and this is where I want to be today. This, there's something that I just didn't tell you. That, that there's a third priority in the ministry of Jesus. That Acts chapter 1 verse 1 only mentions two, but there's really three. And you got to go back to Luke chapter 4 in order to get it for the ministry and message of Dr. Luke. Luke chapter 4, chapter 5 lays out this pattern of Jesus' ministry. Let's walk it down. Luke chapter 4 begins with Jesus establishing, with Luke establishing that Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. And then he says that Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 14, it says that Jesus came back to Galilee in the power of of the Holy Ghost. And that's where the Bible starts talking about Jesus being a teacher. That's where we read Luke chapter 4 verse 18 through 19. The Bible tells us that he was teaching in their synagogues and he was being praised 
Baal. Luke chapter 4 verse 32 tells us that the people were amazed at the teaching of his message because he was teaching them as one who had authority. Glory to God. But then Luke chapter 4 shows us the doing ministry of Jesus. The Bible says that while Jesus was still teaching in the synagogue, there was a man in church. I'm going to mess up right here. I said there was a man in church, but he was possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon, and he was at church. Y'all ain't listening to me. I said there was a man at church, and he was possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon. Do you realize that everybody that's in the parking lot right now ain't full of Holy Ghost? Now, there are some folks here full of hell. That's what they are. They're full of hell. They got the devil in them. Yes, they do. They got a bad attitude, a bad disposition. They ain't got no good word to say. They hate folks. They're jealous and envious and full of malice and hatred. And they talk about folks and they stab folks in the back. says that Jesus was at church and there was a man at the church that was full of the spirit of an unclean demon. And the Bible declared, can I tell you, those demons know who Jesus is. And they'll say to Jesus, Jesus, I know just who you are. And he'll say, leave me alone. It's not your time to deal with me. Can I tell you something? Whenever correction comes, that's when them demonic folks start getting upset. Yeah, I'm gonna talk. I said, whenever correction comes, whenever power comes, whenever authority comes, that's when the devil wants to start showing his ugly head and talk about leave me alone. We always did it this way. We always sat on this pit. We always held this position. Baby, there's a devil in you. Y'all don't like it, but it's the truth anyway. The Bible said that while Jesus was preaching, they interrupted the sermon and said, Leave us alone, because we ain't got nothing to do with you. And it's a shame that folks come to church and they don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. What am I talking about this for? I, I said, It's a shame that Negroes show up at church and have no desire to have a relationship with Jesus. They come to stir up trouble, they come to stir up discord, they come to stir up confusion. But the devil is a liar. Oh, the God. God said, The book said, The book said that Jesus spoke up and cast the devil out in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you? I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been in that position. I don't care how long you've been paying your time. I don't care how much money you gave. Your mama, your grandmama, your auntie, your uncle, and your first cousin could have been founding members of the church. But the only somebody got power in GP is Jesus. You ain't got to believe you can't do you Just sit there a while. The power of Jesus will catch you out. Can I tell you the truth? The Holy Ghost will either draw you or drive you. You just stay here long enough and let this power get on you. Either you're going to change or you're going to leave. I said, it ain't taking it back. I said, either you're going to change or you're going to leave. I ain't even got to where I'm trying to go. The Bible declares that there was a demon sinning church and Jesus took authority over the devil and cast him out. And the devil didn't leave easy. The Bible says that he threw that man on the ground in front of everybody, but he had to go. Can I tell you? They may fight on their way out, but they're going to leave. I said, I'm preaching better than y'all say amen. They may fight on their way out. They may try to throw the church up. They may lie on me. They may lie on you. They may try to slow a rumor. But when God casts you out, you've got to leave him. All right. The Bible says that he dealt with that demon. 
woman that was sitting in church, but then he left the church. And the Bible says he went by Peter's house. And the Bible says that Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever. Hallelujah. The Bible says the fever was so bad that it had a bedridden lame in a bed. But Jesus took the same power. Y'all ain't listening to what I'm saying. I said Jesus took the same power that was at work at the church and he went home with the same power that he had at church and he laid his hands on the sick mother-in-law. And the Bible declares that that sickness had to let her go. And I came to tell somebody in the parking lot on this last Sunday in the month of September that if you got it for real, the same thing you do at church. When you get home, that baby may be going crazy. Put your hand on it and keep your mouth shut. The Bible declares that when he touched Peter's mother-in-law, the fever had to break. And I came, I came, I came to tell us. I'm too fast, y'all. I said I came to tell somebody that the Holy Ghost doesn't just want to work at church. He don't just want to have power at church. He wants to have power in your home. He wants to get to your house and go up. That's why you need the Holy Ghost because your marriage needs to get better. That's why you need the Holy Ghost because you need a better relationship with your children. That's why you need the Holy Ghost because you need to get them bills in order. That's why you need the Holy Ghost because you need some control so you can get up from that table and get on the truck and walk on the wire. That's why you need the Holy Ghost because he wants to go right at your house. I ain't even got where I'm going yet, yo. I said the Holy Ghost went to Peter's house and cast the sickness out of his mother. And the Bible says while the sun was setting, anybody who was sick with all of their different diseases was brought to Jesus. And the Bible said he laid his hands on them and he was healing them. And the Bible says the demons were coming out of many shouting that you are the son of God. But Jesus was rebuking them. He would not allow them to speak because they knew him to be the Christ. I will say this and then I'm going to move on. I know I'm messing up, but I'm being right now. Devil, you get out of this mic right now. I said it. I said some of y'all go want to talk when you leave. You hell raise you. Don't you get mad at me when I won't let you talk in my name. Jesus won't let the devil talk in his name. chapter 4, that he had a teaching ministry, and two, he had a doing ministry. But when you get to Luke chapter 5, he starts a discipling ministry. Sister Sam, you're going to like this because you talked about it on Wednesday night. The Bible says that Peter was sitting in a boat on the sea, and Jesus said, let me get in your boat so I can preach to the crowd. And he pushed out a little ways from the shore. And when the people finally left, God said to Peter, cast your net over for a drought. And the Bible said that Peter had to go against the grain of his own understanding. And he went on and did what Jesus, can I tell you what Peter said? Peter said, nevertheless, not my will. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll cast out the net. And the Bible said that he brought in so many fish that his nets began to break, that his boat began to sink. He was so blessed that he couldn't keep it all. He had to call somebody over. And their nets began to break. And their boat began to sink. And can I tell you, this ain't what I'm trying to say, but I feel like telling somebody. Maybe somebody on Facebook Live will grab this by faith. If you just follow Jesus, he knows how to bless you so much that your necks will break. He knows how to bless you so much that your book 
will begin to sing. I need somebody. God help me get to the text. I need somebody that got a testimony in the parking lot. Maybe you went there in an apartment complex. Maybe you crossed the street in the overflow. Maybe you on Facebook Live. But I need somebody with a testimony that he'll bless you so much that you won't have room. You won't have room to receive. And so the Bible, the Bible declares that he started calling people to himself. The Bible says that he called a man by the name of Peter and Andrew, his brother. He called James and John, Philip and Bartholomew. He called Matthew and Thomas. He called James, the son of Alphaeus. He called Simon, the zealot. He called Judas, the son of James. And he called Judas Iscariot, the thief. And he looked at him and said, if any man wishes to come after me, he must first deny himself and take up his cross. And that's when he'll follow me. Can I tell somebody that if you really want the power of God, you got to spend some time with him. If you really want the Lord to show up in your life, go put that plate down and open that Bible. If you really want the Lord to show up in your life, you ought to get on your knees and you ain't got to talk all the time. Say, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to sit right here until you talk to me. Mm. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that there was doing ministry. There was teaching ministry. And there was discipling ministry. See, the doing ministry was the demonstration of his power. Mm. And the teaching ministry was the proclamation of his message. But the discipling ministry was the transformation of his people. And let me tell you that you can't spend time with Jesus and your life not change. I need somebody. Oh, I need somebody to help me preach that the more I spend time with Jesus, the more my life changes. The more I spend time on my knees, the less I talk about folks. The more I spend time in His Word, the more my conversation changes. The more I spend time with His Holy Ghost, the more I got love in my heart. Joy in my spirit and peace in my mind. The more I'm kind and gentle, the more I'm good. The more I have temperance and self-control, the more I spend with Jesus. Glory to God, the more He makes me like Him. Is there anybody that feel like having the preacher preach and say the more I spend time with? I said the more I spend time with them, the more I'm learning that there's something on the inside and it's working on the outside. Oh, what a change, what a great change in my life. I don't do the things I used to do, but since I met Jesus, I don't say the things I used to say, but since I met Jesus, I don't know. Yeah, we need to go about. 
what's the movement the Bible says that he started to walk and this word walk means that he started making forward progress see when you get up off the ground when you've been down so long you ain't got to worry about going up you just need to worry about going on I said you ain't got to worry about going up or you just need to worry about going forward and so now that the man has finally got up on his feet now that strength has come now that help has come the Bible declares that he started walking one foot in front of the other it wasn't running It was a slow process, one foot in front of the other. Y'all ain't listening. I said it wasn't running, it wasn't talking, it was just walking. On one foot in front of the other. And before you start running, before you get in a hurry, you gotta find your rhythm of one foot in front of the other. Just got saved last week. You ain't ready to pastor. You just got saved last week. You ain't no deacon. Sit yourself down. And you know what? Y'all don't like this kind of preacher. I say put one foot in front of the other. Oh, you just got married. You don't know that man from Adam. Wash your mouth. Stop all that nagging. And just be married. Jesus, on my 
I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Ain't he been good? I'm stopping. I just wanna know if there anybody over there with the testimony that he's been good. What about y'all back here? Ain't God been good? Somebody in that parking lot, don't play that who trick. I wanna hear him. Ain't God been good? Come on, somebody. Ain't God been good? I got to praise him. I got to praise him. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the power in which your word was praised. Holy Spirit, roll your sleeves, go to work for us. Go places we cannot go. Touch hearts we cannot touch. Change minds we cannot change. Do it for your glory. The good of the church. In the name of Jesus. If you need to be saved, we got deacons to minister to you. If you need to be a part of the church, we got deacons to be a minister to you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you his grace. The Lord turn his face towards you. The Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You've been so good to us, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you while you're leaving. I just want to speak that blessing over you. 